Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church in Champaign, Illinois. We're glad that that you are with us, that we are with you. Thank you for welcoming us into your home uh, by way of this this technology. We're glad to be here. Um, I would call your attention to the announcements in the bulletin, but you don't have one and neither do I. Uh, Good morning, Eric. Good morning. Soon we'll have bulletins in people's hands. Soon we will. We are coming out of COVID. We are coming out of COVID. Thankful for all the progress the scientific medical communities have made and uh, you're uh, following the, the guidelines so well. We appreciate that. And we're looking at uh, coming back into pers- in-person worship here at 9 a.m. next Sunday. Next Sunday, the 20th of uh, June. The 20th of February. No, the, no, no. <laughs> the 20th of June. We'll be gathered at 9 o'clock for our regular right service. We'll see you here. And we'll still see you there. You will yeah. still be streaming the service. It just won't be pre-recorded and edited. It will be streaming live to you at home. So you can continue to watch uh, uh, from firstpres.live. However, it uh, works out best for you there from home if you're more comfortable with that. We'd love to see you when you're able to do so here in person. And we do. We want to see, we want to see you every week. We're so grateful that you've been worshiping with us from all around the country. Uh, continue to be with us and And when you're able to get and you feel safe and ready to go back to your home congregations in your hometown, then by all means, uh, do that. But we're here for you, and you can watch us at 9, and of course, you can go to our website and watch us whenever. We'll Um, be suggesting that uh, you wear masks as you come uh, come back in person. There are some among our community who are not able to be vaccinated yet because of age or uh, other restrictions. And so... Uh, in, in Christian love, we will suggest masks uh, for those who return to in-person worship here for the time being. Man, uh, Are there other announcements? Well, right now, there's a dance party going outside as we, uh, as we record. Our dream program is having a great time out in the alley. So if you hear any extra bass in, in there, that's not Matt or my deep voices. Uh, there's some that's extra, a DJ. It's a DJ out in the alley, and it's a lot of fun. Right. So I wish you could be here to appreciate that music with us. Right. I hope everybody in the neighborhood appreciates the loud music. I'm not sure they do, Uh, but uh, grace abounds, grace abounds. Uh, This is a season of transition. We're coming out of pandemic, and the Corbin family has announced uh, Eric is leaving us to accept a call of the First Presbyterian Church at Woodstock, Illinois. Congratulations, Thank you. I appreciate it. Looking forward to that new adventure uh, as as I I grieve... uh, um, loss of, of this immediate connection with you. We are still connected in the body of Christ. And through our denomination, that I keep being told it's a small denomination, we'll still see each other around. Uh, going a bit further north, uh, came from, from Tennessee, and I just keep heading further north. Uh, before long, I'll be at the North Pole, I suppose, and uh, worshiping with Santa. Uh, but it's for now, for yeah. now, Woodstock, Illinois, uh, it's a fun town, and we're excited to uh, to embark on this new adventure as God has called us to that ministry in Woodstock. Uh, and uh, looking forward to being with you for a few more weeks here online, in person, and uh, in, in lots of meetings in the next uh, couple of weeks. So One of our leaders said, uh, our loss is their gain, and that's true. And uh, whenever there's a gain, it's a gain for us all. Mm-hmm. So uh, Please think about how you want to say goodbye to Eric and, and write your notes, send your cards, uh, give your hugs, uh, call him up, text him, email, etc. Be in touch with Eric and the family as they uh, make way to leave. It's, yeah. a, it's not a far journey, you know, two hours away, two and a half hours away, but mm. to move your family and to, mm. to pull up all your roots. It's like Abraham and the Ur of Chaldeans <laughs> coming down the Fertile Crescent. It's a long way, so... <laughs> Uh, We're grateful for Eric, and um, uh, we're going to be fine in this transition, um, though we will grieve. So, welcome to worship. We're glad you're here. Uh, Rachel will lead us in our call to worship. Join with me. The church is the place where the broken gather. Let Let us us worship worship God, God. who reconciles reconciles us us to one one another and and to God. God. The church is the place where sinners are welcome. Let us, Let us worship God, God who, who with forgiving hands, shapes, shapes us into new people. The church is the place where the lost, the least, the forgotten, the ignored gather. Let, Let us, us worship, worship God, God who looks at us, us with the eyes of love. love. Amen. Amen. Good morning. The hymn tune is Duke Street. You'll recognize it very easily, but the text is a little different than you normally have. 
please join us in singing the hymn, Fight the Good Fight. Is it so easy to boast of our achievements, yet so hard to humbly come to God with the mistakes we make? This is the place where we stand in the presence of the one who longs to shape us into new people. So let us ask our loving God to forgive us now as we pray. Join with me. We confess God of faith that we ask about someone's background to see if they are like us, while you look at where their heart is grounded. We examine one another's good looks or athletic prowess while you take notice of how they reach out to those who are different. We gaze at the size of another's house or car to judge how successful they are, and you observe whether or not they have faith the size of the smallest seed. Forgive us, anointing God, for looking at those around us with human eyes and not seeing them as created in your image. As you shape us into new people, give us new eyes, new hearts, new lives to follow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. No longer do we walk the ways of sin and death. With Jesus, we walk the ways of life. Christ has come to take our old ways onto himself and to fill us with new life in God. Now that we know we are forgiven, now that we know we are at peace, now that we can step forward in faith, let us do so with confidence and trust to live with God forever and ever. Friends, the old life is gone, the new life has begun. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Amen. We have been so grateful during the season of pandemic that, that you have been faithful in your offerings. Uh, we are called to give our whole lives in service to God. And a portion of that gift ends up in our offering plates. And we serve the world. Um, through this place because of your generosity and God's generosity through you. Thank you for your gifts. May we pray together. Gracious God, bless what we give and bless who we are that the way we live might be given in service. We ask it in the name of the Christ who loves us, 
who walks with us, who calls us, and who gave us his life. Amen and amen. This morning we have Mindy and Jip and Samantha to bring us a special word. Good morning. Morning, Samantha. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. What are we going to talk about today? Well, Jesus is doing it again. He's using those metaphors. Remember when we've talked about metaphors in the past? Oh, yeah. He was comparing things to other things, but they weren't really those things. <laughs> it was just to tell us about something. Yeah, exactly. He'll compare two different things so that we can have a better understanding of something that's more complicated. So in the story today, Jesus is teaching about the kingdom of God, which is pretty big and complicated, right? Yeah. So in order to help us understand it, he ex uh, compares it to a mustard seed. A mustard seed? Mm-hmm. He says the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. So, so if the seed grows, does it become the, the mustard I put on my <laughs> hot dog? Uh, eventually, yeah, if you, you know, take care of the seed and it grows into a plant, like the actual plant, you could use it for that. But as we were just talking about with the metaphor, it's not literally going to grow into a mustard tree, but the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. And I brought a mustard seed with me if you'd like to see one. Well, yeah, what do they look like? Yeah, so if you look up there, I'll make sure everyone at home can see it too. In that little circle is an even smaller seed. That's really small. Mm -hmm. that's, that's tiny. I know. It's right next to that dime so you can see just how small it is. Well, why would Jesus pick something so little <laughs> to talk about something big? Well, that's a good question. And it's one of my favorite parables or metaphors, actually, because I think it's a good reminder that it might start small, but the kingdom of God is always growing. And you're right. The kingdom of God will be big and expansive and everywhere, but sometimes it's hard to know it's there. It's hard to see it, just like a mustard seed, but it'll grow, mm -hmm. and it'll turn into all the things you're probably imagining. Well, so if I plant that seed, then, then it'll grow mm -hmm. with the sun and water, but, but I won't make it grow. It'll just happen, <laughs> and if I come back, I see changes. Right. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is saying, even though if you only notice a little bit of what God's doing in the world, maybe something as small as a little seed, it may not seem like much, but there's a lot of growth going on and God's mm -hmm. making it all happen. Whether you're actively involved in it or not, it's going on all around us all the time. And that's pretty amazing, isn't it? Well, yeah. I guess little things I do do matter. Exactly. Yeah, That's another really good thing to take from this parable. What you do as one person might feel small, but it's adding up to something really amazing and it's important. Yeah. Shall we pray about that? Yeah, let's pray about that. I'll pray. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks, Chip. Dear God, thank you for mustard and mustard seeds and hot dogs and, and for other ways that we do little things to help the kingdom of God grow. Amen. Amen. Thanks for the prayer, Jip. Yeah. See you later. Bye, Samantha. Bye.
Our reading this morning is from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 32. Let's go to God in prayer. God, bless us to hear your word, that our ears, hearts, and minds would be open to what you have to say to us. We pray in the name of the Christ. Amen. Blaze will have our French translation this morning of Mark 4, 26 through 32. Bonjour, mes frères et sœurs. Aujourd'hui, nous allons lire dans le livre de Marc, chapitre 4, du 26e au 32e verset. Il dit encore, « Voici à quoi ressemble le royaume de Dieu. Il est semblable à un homme qui jette de la semence en terre, qu'il dorme, or qu'il reste éveillé, nuit et jour, la semence germe et pousse sans qu'il sache comment. En effet, d'elle-même, la terre produit d'abord l'herbe, puis l'épi, enfin les grains, tout formé dans l'épi. Et dès que le fruit est mis, on y met la faucille, car c'est le moment de la moisson. Il dit encore, à quoi comparerons-nous le royaume de Dieu ou pas quelle parabole représenterons-nous Il est comme une graine de moutarde. Lorsqu'on la sème en terre, c'est la plus petite de toutes les semences qui sont sur la terre. Mais lorsqu'elle a été sémée, elle monte, devient plus grande que toutes les légumes et développe des grandes branches de sorte que les oiseaux du ciel peuvent habiter sous son ombre. Amen. I invite you now to listen for God's word for you. Jesus also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The kingdom of God has come near. That's what John the Baptist came on the scene preaching. We read about it every year at the beginning of Advent. And then the kingdom of God came very near. The kingdom of God was and is present in and through Jesus right here on earth. The kingdom is here. But where? Where is it really? I've looked around and I can't find any castles with drawbridges and moats. If there's a kingdom here, surely we've got some big castles or palaces. And, and what about the royalty? Where are the kings and queens, princes and princesses? As a parent, I've seen quite a few princesses around my house, the Disney kind anyway. But what about this kingdom of God that Jesus talked about? What is this kingdom that even Jesus seems to struggle for a comparison? Jesus says, what can we compare it to? Okay, perhaps a mustard seed. It's, it's such a tiny thing, he tells them. Now really, they already knew this. In his parables, Jesus used examples that his listeners would understand. They knew a mustard seed was tiny, even if we don't have such an immediate connection with it as the original audience did. And those who who heard Jesus' message that day probably agreed immediately. If they were part of the kingdom, then that mustard seed comparison was pretty accurate because Jesus' little band of followers were pretty small and insignificant. They must have looked at themselves in comparison to the Roman Empire and all the forces at the command of the emperor. He could wipe out this band of followers of Jesus in minutes. So yeah, Jesus, this kingdom is pretty small, just like that mustard seed. They could then have gone home pretty downtrodden, discouraged about the tiny size of this kingdom of God in which they were somehow a part. Why did Jesus make that comparison? It seems like it would just make the disciples feel depressed. But of course, we know that Jesus went on. He says that like a mustard seed, this tiny, tiny mustard seed, because 
that small, they are like that small mustard seed because that smallest of the seeds becomes a great shrub with large branches that the birds can make nests in. Jesus is telling them that yes, they are small. Yes, they appear to be insignificant to the world, but just wait. This tiny seed is going to grow and grow and become something spectacular. And so we have this parable about how the kingdom is like a mustard seed, starting out very small and growing into something quite large. This parable is recorded not only in Mark, where we read it today, but also in Matthew and Luke. In each account, this mustard plant just seems to get a little bigger and bigger. In Mark's account of the parable, the mustard seed grows and becomes a really large shrub with branches big enough for birds to make nests. In Matthew and Luke, that greatest of shrubs actually becomes a tree for the birds. This tiny seed becomes a great and mighty tree. And that, Jesus has been telling them, that is what the kingdom of God is like. So if we want to be big and mighty like a tree, we've just got to wait a while, let that tiny seed start growing and growing, and eventually it will be a tree that the birds can build nests in. That's what the kingdom is like except that I don't think that's really the point Jesus was trying to get across. Now, I do think that some of that has come true. That band of disciples that Jesus had as followers has become the world's largest religion with somewhere around 2.3 billion followers. From tiny, tiny roots has come a very large church, and that is to be celebrated. But I don't know if that's what Jesus was saying to his disciples that day. You see, they knew better than we do that mustard seeds don't actually grow into large trees. Jesus was employing a bit of hyperbole here. Mustard plants are actually annuals, and the highest that they grow is about four feet tall. This was not a plant that most people wanted to grow anyway. It was an invasive weed. It's described in some places as an aggressive annual weed. This was not a plant that people wanted growing in their gardens. No farmer would plant a mustard seed because soon they wouldn't have a garden. They'd just have a really large mustard plant. The Roman nobleman Pliny said of the mustard plant, it grows entirely wild and when it has been sown, it is scarcely possible to get the place rid of it. For those of us from the South, I think a pretty good comparison to this mustard seed with which we may not be that familiar is kudzu. For those who may not know, this is a picture of kudzu on the screen. Kudzu is a vine that grows and grows along the sides of the roads in the South. It was brought to the U.S. and placed along the sides of roadways to keep the steep banks from eroding. It has done that job and plenty more, growing and expanding, and it is almost impossible to remove. Kudzu has a few nicknames, including Mile a Minute Vine and the Vine That Ate the South. Now that is what I think Jesus was talking about. Not really that this tiny mustard seed might grow up into a tall tree. Not really that this tiny kingdom of God might be a tall tree. But I think the bigger issue for Jesus was that this tiny mustard seed would spread and spread and grow and grow in, in width and breadth more so than in height. Jesus was telling his disciples that the kingdom of God was not like the kingdoms of this earth with their hierarchies. It was not really going to be one that would grow up and up. It was a kingdom that would grow outward, spreading forth in a way that's wild and unpredictable and almost impossible to remove. Shane Claiborne talks about it in his book, The Irresistible Revolution. He says, the Jesus revolution is not a frontal attack on the empires of this world. It is a subtle contagion, spreading one little life at a time. That's what God's kingdom is like. In fact, there are those who suggest we drop the word kingdom because of all that connotes of earthly rulers and power, castles and royalty. They suggest we use the word kingdom to connote that we are family. The kingdom of God is growing like a family, spreading wider and wider. It reminds me of the way that our own earthly families grow with family gatherings, including more and more people as there are marriages and births and adoptions. God's family, God's kingdom is growing like that. For this world doesn't really need more huge palaces surrounded by moats and drawbridges. It needs more of this contagious mustard seed-like growth. This wild, unpredictable growth that spreads and spreads and you're scarcely able to get rid of it. 
That's what we need more of. We need more of us telling our friends, coworkers, and neighbors about this contagious love we found in the kingdom of Jesus. Not a kingdom spread with warfare and crusades, but a kingdom that spreads little by little, further and further, spreading God's love everywhere it goes. One more thing about mustard plants. They're not orderly and controlled, but rather go where they please. That's something else to be said about God's kingdom. Once often the church has, has tried its best to control things, to want to shape things so that they're just the way we want them. We, as part of our long Presbyterian heritage, value order and control. And so often we, we try to maintain that order with a strong sense of the right way to do things. At the same time, another part of us rebels against that order, trying to let the spirit move and go where it would. We want to be orderly and dignified and in control, but sometimes we want to just let the Spirit move in us. Both are needed. But I think Jesus was speaking today to that freer side of us. He was telling us that the kingdom of God grows like a mustard plant, like kudzu. It's not something we can control. It's disorderly and chaotic. And part of us is going to want to rebel against that. But I think Jesus is telling us we've got to learn to let go sometimes. We've got to learn to let the Spirit go where it will and the mustard plant grow where it will. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Tiny and ordinary, but bursting with potential. Once it starts growing, watch out. Because we never know where the Spirit is going to lead and just where that mustard plant is going to grow. So may we allow God's love to work in and through each of us so that God's kingdom may grow ever wider and wider in God's love. Amen. pray together. Holy God, you've convened us in this place at this time, and our hearts are bowed this moment in prayer and praise. We bring our fears, our celebrations, our desires, and the heavy beating of our hopeful hearts to you now. You are with us on the journey, at the end of the journey, and at the beginning and during and through all of the ups and downs along the way. We praise and thank you for your presence with us. Continue to let us know how you walk next to us and with us. And continue to tune our vision that we might 
see your presence and evidence of your love all around and open our hands that we might share all that we've been blessed to be stewards upon and over and with. Oh God, we give you thanks for the journey of faith that has led us to this place. We thank you for the people who've come into our lives and the people who've walked through and now have left. We give you thanks for the Corbin family as they make provision to move only two and a half hours away, but in some ways a world away from us uh, to grow together with a new congregation, uh, to be in ministry in a new place. Oh God, as they step into that familiar environment of service, um, accustom them to a new place, new friends, new people, new routines, and bless them not only on their journey there, but on their journey through this next season of ministry. And bless us, too, the people of First Pres here, as we grieve their goodbyes, we celebrate their, their new beginnings, and as we ponder what's next for us. Bless us, don't allow us to be anxious, uh, and help us to lean into this, this, new, this new season you've called us to enjoy and to be stewards of and to celebrate. God, we ask it in Christ's name. We also lift up others in our church on various kinds of journeys. We pray for Jan Holmes, who, who has uh, struggled with her chronic illness. We lift her up. We pray for um, all of our um, Mission Possible crew as, as they and we are coming out of pandemic. Uh, we pray for the Monday Munchers, who, who have been a part of this congregation for many years with, uh, and strengthened us with their prayers and their service. We give you thanks for saints who have been servants among us. We lift up all members of our session as they uh, pray and work and busy themselves doing ministry here and helping us do ministry. Make us attentive to their invitation for us to come alongside and work together. For many hands do make light work. We give you thanks for other leaders in our church, Nancy Martin, we thank you for her, and we lift up her brother-in-law, Jeff Poor, as he undergoes radiation treatments for prostate cancer. Um, we pray for um, our staff as, as we are all moving through a time of transition, moving from pandemic to post-pandemic, and also as we lose a friend and colleague in ministry, Eric. We pray for all those doing tech support um, and all the volunteers who've helped us for so long and so well. Bless them, holy God, and ready them for the days to come. We pray for our COVID response team who has worked diligently and hard attempting to do the safe and wise things as we come out of pandemic. Bless them, holy God, and if they err, let them err uh, on the side uh, of, of uh, over-concern and over-caution. We pray for our flock, and I lift up especially those persons who are not able for whatever reason, to be vaccinated at this time. Bless them, holy God, and help them stay well and healthy and safe and lead them to the time when they can receive their vaccination. Finally, God, we lift up the new beginning that, that happens in our uh, sanctuary this week. Uh, yesterday, we celebrated the, the, the marriage of Jacqueline and Bain, we wish them well as they begin their new life. Um, they went to college here years ago, as you know, and have come back for a wedding in this place. Holy God, God of new beginnings, we give you thanks for your journey with us. Continue by your grace to guide our steps. For we ask it in the name of Jesus the Christ and the power of your Holy Spirit. And we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen, and amen. Our second hymn today is We Walk by Faith and Not by Sight. Please join us. We walk by faith. 
faith and not by sight, with precious words drawn near. Oh, Christ who spoke as none e'er spoke, my peace be with you here. We may not touch your hands and side, nor follow Go forth in peace, a love and serve the Lord, growing in your love for God and God's creation like that mustard seed, so that our love for one another and God's love is spread wider and wider. And let God's people say, Amen.